Hilton here in Hildesheim. German Darts Championship European Tour event won in 2017. This is the penultimate match of the Saturday afternoon action. It's Bunting against Pallet. I'm Chris Murphy and joining me is Rob Malarkey for what's going to be another 6-1 either way, <laughs> surely? Surely. Um, well, two players who know each other inside out, know each other very well, as you say, off the hockey as well, good friends, and maybe that familiarity will breed a, a, a much elongated match, a, a longer match here today. I'll be surprised if it is 6-1. Pallets came through yesterday by that scoreline against Veo Vinica, the uh, Finnish player. Stephen Bunting, though, on his day, a very, very capable player indeed. His uh, performance in Europe last year was fairly noteworthy. He had a semi-final appearance at the European Darts Open where he lost to Peter Wright. Didn't qualify for just the one event. He had to come through qualifying for the first four, but then he was there by Wright as one of the top seeds and he's here once again, this time as the number 15. Difficult one to call this. David Palitzu has had his moments on the European Tour Gentlemen, stage. First leg came in and threw first. Came on! semi-finalist in a European Tour event a couple of years ago but was, um, yeah I'll be surprised if it's 6-1 either way neither players really coming in 16. in fantastic form are they so no. it is difficult to call you know very much similar form lines obviously bunting the higher ranked of the pair he's 22nd in the PDC Order of Mary but he's starting One man of in decent style here this is against the darts but he's in it a precarious position really in terms of qualifying for these tournaments because he's 17th on the Proto Order of Merit. Now the only player currently above him that's likely 56. to opt out is Gary Anderson and he could well be out of the top 16 by the end of this tournament anyway. Yeah. Christo Reyes just winning, he's leapfrogged Stephen Bunting now so he'd be hoping to jump back in front of him with victory 56. here. And of course, should he not win this match he will not receive the money on his ranking. So a very, very precarious position and one that could see him having to go back to qualifiers so plenty of stake as well as the obvious incentive of a place in the third round tomorrow where the winner will face either Peter Wright or Christian Kist by the way 95 David Pallet didn't qualify for this tournament last oh, sorry he lost to uh, Mensil Sulovic last time in the third round in uh, October of 2016. There was a last tournament of last year, wasn't it? And the first of this one. So uh, Alan Norris will have to win it again if he wants to keep his crown for a full year. One. Yeah, I was going to say, he didn't qualify two years ago uh, for this tournament, but he did make it last year. As for Bunting, exited at this stage, the second round at the hands of Steve West. 37. Steve West had a very productive time of it during the autumn months last year. Anyway, bunting on uh, 108 here. 68. Just Baby making tops. 32. Yeah, that was unlucky. Just uh, seemed to move the wire. I think Pallet having to sort of bat off a fly or something before I he just threw that. what he was doing there. I has it put he him scored. off? The yeah. dart made it difficult as well. The way that land with that sort of inverted angle make it harder at that side of the board. Game yeah. show and the first uh, punishing punishing pallet there for his missed Second dart at double sixteen. Yeah, just seemed to knock pallet off his stride slightly. That, but uh, needs to put that one behind him. Well, so far we've seen four six ones out of the six matches we've had. As Bunting players in the first match and then a bit one. Yeah, they went to Gerwin Price, Yella Klaassen, Kim Hybrex, who we've just seen, and, and the biggest surprise of the lot, Jan Decker defeating Michael Smith six one, the first seed to fall. Indeed, by a very very hefty scoreline. Uh, Bunting standing way over on the right hand side of the hockey. One uh, new shirt for Stephen Bunting this year. Looks like a new haircut as well. Will it bring about a change in fortune for him? So far, so good. He has the break of throw, and he's got a cushion wow. here as well. Yeah, kicked off the leg with a max. He's certainly found his range on the treble 20. Wow. He's like the opposite of Andrew Gilding, who stands way over on the left-hand side of the hockey. He's the polar opposite of that. 
I remember Rod Harrington questioning the wisdom of that because obviously you've got to throw from an angle and you're throwing a further distance as well. Well, especially when it gets to the outer ring because you're throwing a much further distance of double 16 than you are for, say, double 10 or double 18. 89. Good set up that using the ball, the bullets. All Pallet can do now is hit and hope. He needs another treble to leave any kind of finish. Does that? We'd expect Bunting to double his advantage here. So just to make your point, you saw him move closer to it then. He stepped into the middle of the hockey for the second dart. And it didn't knock him off his stride. He's found himself in a 2 0 lead hit. You see the camera angle there, how far he does stand across, but you know, it's, it's what he's always done, so. You know, he's been a successful player, former Lakeside champion. Can't see him changing that. Just the one title last year, it was at the second place championship events in uh, March of 2016. He beat Peter Wright, Robert Thornton, Lewis and Van Gerwen. It's not a bad list of names, is it? To a bad at all. Defeat on the way to a title. David Pallet hasn't reached the quarterfinals of anything for uh, over a year since the very first Pro Tour event of 2016. What? First, well, we knew a lot about him before he played Kim Hybrex at the World Championship 55. in December of 2015, the 2016 World Championship. He beat uh, Hybrex 3-2 to reach the last place of two, then had that amazing game with Mensor Sulovic. Well, right up, folks. Picked up 15 grand for that run at Ali Pali, but since then, prize money has been pretty hard to come by for him. Just uh, a little under £12,000 over the course of the rest of last year. 42. David requires 61. Game show on the third well, That's better from David, David Pallet. 61 out to halve the, the deficit. Yeah, that game he mentioned on. against Mensal Sulevich. Both players missed the double for the perfect leg in that mm. one. We will see Sulevich later on against Mervyn King. Mouth-watering encounter. Yeah. One. Mervyn's just arrived, by the way. He's late, isn't he? Usually arrives about... Yeah. 36 hours before. 91. He would have been practicing in the hotel this morning, I'm sure. Mervyn King, the uh, biggest practicer. One, One more game to go in the afternoon session. That's the defending champion, Alan Norris, against Richie Corner. And then we've got eight more matches this evening as the field is whittled down to the final 16. The tournament will be played One. out. And the winner crowned tomorrow, £25,000 to the champion in each of these European Tour events. Yeah, usual marathon tomorrow if he wants to go all the way to lifting the trophy. Four One matches you have to play. Third round in the afternoon session and then the evening session of quarter-final, semi-final and final. Bunting in the mood once again here. One. The pallet needed that last start in treble to leave a 170, so Bullet's going to have Bunting. Bullet. Well, he's going to take it out. One and red and five. Misfired with the last start, but uh, he'll return for the double eight. Yeah, we'll just see where he stands for the double eight as well, on that far side of the board. Sixteen. Saving the requires sixteen. No. Two good markers, but uh, further away with the Saving third dart. Hard to call because when he misses it, you can say, "Oh, he stands a long way across." But you know they were pretty close, weren't they? Now then, is Pallet gonna punish? Seventy-eight. Well, the last dart landed in the back of the one that was already in the board, so no points for that one. The old Robin Hood shot. Now he'll get this one because it's closer. Of course he will. Wow, right up, folks. That's no 
more like it. Just a nice solid start for David Pallet. One hundred and forty. Likewise from Stephen Bunting. Yeah, already looking like an important leg. Forewarn and throwing next One would be a, a very handsome advantage for the Merseyside man. And he's going the right way about it, Chris. Yeah, third match. Stephen Bunting, former Premier League player himself, of course. 64. Yeah, we had that mini discussion earlier about the Premier League coming too soon for some players. That may have been the case for Bunting as well, but... One up. David Reed, well, he was bold enough to ride into the PDC following his Lakeside glory, and he was given the, uh, the rewards for that. He was he made an immediate impact, won a pro to have in a couple of events, didn't he? Require 12 for ball. Well, it's only mm. showing one on the dartboard. The two's gone missing from the 12, so. Is that a bit off putting for Bunting? David requires 64. Maybe it was. Single for double. To get himself out of trouble. Furious with himself there, David Pallet. Bunting ready to pounce here. Chasing round the board, back up to fives, and in the end he gets the job done. And he does find himself forward up, and he's throwing here for a 5-1 lead. And Pallet just showing one or two signs of frustration at the back of the stage there. Well, I tell you what, Rob, you doubted 6-1 before the match. It's looking likely now. It's looking very likely indeed. One round and 40. I mentioned that win yesterday for Pallet. OK, it was against a player who uh, you know, has limited experience on the big stage. But One Pallet round. still came up with an average of almost 100 in that uh, performance. And there was lots to like about it. I just thought he could have uh, brought more with him today so far, but may yet come good. He might have a little response somewhere, but he's running out of legs. 60. And he's running out of time as well. But you feel that he would have to win this leg. Once Bunting is within one, you fancy he's going to get match darts. It's been a decent display from Stephen Bunting. Good to see, because he's been a man that's been searching for form over the past year. 60. And it's always frustrating for us darts fans, because we've seen the quality that he can produce. One. Around three years ago, watching Stephen Bunting, and every time that the first start was in the treble, you just expected a maximum. Well, that's a good recovery from uh, Palace, and that's more like it. He's perhaps wondering why he couldn't do that on a more consistent basis earlier on in this match. Bunting threatening here. 63 remaining. Yeah, not sure about that shot myself. He, want, he went for the bullseye because he prefers 32, but 42, the treble 14, is around three times as big as that target. And his opponent is on a finish. And he might take it, you know. Could go tops, tops. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the danger. 17 more. It's a bigger target, yeah, but that's... Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Bunting on 50 here. Topsy wants then two cracks at it. Back to tens. Just look at that though, Rob. David he went for the ball, a small target to leave double 16 the previous time, and then when he's got 50 left, he goes 10 for tops. Yeah. Bamboozled me. Will Pallet be the beneficiary? He will. 
And that's a break up throw, and as you said, the game's not over. All of a sudden, he's throwing to move within a leg. Yeah, a little wonder Bunting shaking his head there. That was there for the taking, I thought. But uh, anyway, on we go. Wow. Still has a pulse here and still in the frame. Bunting goes off the boil. 58. As Pallet finds himself on the march, then who knows? Lovely lie. Or he'd be disappointed. Seems to be switching to 18s rather than 19s as well in this match, David Pallet. But when he comes back, the usual shot here is going straight for the 19s because 59. 7 leaves 170. Well, he opts not to. 134. Yeah, sticking with his plan, but look. No finish when two trebles down at the bottom would have left him one. Although Bunting can't get to one, but... Just the kind of habits that a lot of players like to be in. Dan was saying yesterday, the likes of Michael Van Gerwen will do that automatically, whatever their opponents yeah. are. And invariably go for the bullseye and take out the 170 anyway. 93. Bunting is a player that can get easily flustered as well if things start to unravel. 59. David requires 76. And he's still not down to a finish. So six starts from here. Might only need two. Game and he does only need two. David Paddock. Let's game on now. The throat first. Game on. Bunting led 4 warm. Was looking like he was going to move ahead. Had the dart to move 5 1 ahead. But David Paddock has fought his way back into this match and will Bunting. 100. Get flustered. It's hard to forget what's gone before, isn't it? As much as you'd like to. And now One David Pallet is starting 21. to turn the screw a little bit on Stephen Bunting. Yeah, shame about that last start, though. The crowd have just calmed down a little bit, haven't they? It's been 51. very uh, just a loud and exciting atmosphere today. I think they hit a peak, didn't they? And it's, uh, it's understandable there should be a lull. But uh, they'll find their voice again soon. I'm pretty sure of that. We well, certainly will this evening with the likes of Wade, Chisnell, Wright, Whitlock and Van Gerwen all in action. And we'll see plenty of darts like this, I'm sure. Oh, no! Can he follow the 180 with the 170? Well, Pallet hasn't left to finish again. Yeah, second leg in succession. Is the big one on? It is. Wow, right. The camera zoned in, but he played it safe. Yeah, well, Pallet given the chance to do that. His reluctance to use the 19s, meaning he couldn't leave a finish. And Bullet playing. Wow, right Sensible, but Pallet's breathing down his neck now. Would he wish he'd gone for the bullseye? Your answer is, perhaps. Ooh. Oh, probably. Stepping over now. Game now stepping over to good effect. With Pallet waiting in the wings on double 11. Yeah, decision vindicated in the end. Just about got away with that. Probably is the right shot, isn't it? But you've got to hold your nerve then when your opponent's waiting on a double after. Absolutely. I don't know how much of it is just down to how you feel at the time. How important the leg is. I mean, if that had been a, a, a leg to win the match, maybe he would have gone for it, just wants to get it done. Yeah. It just depends what the state of play is at, at that particular moment in time. Maybe even, you know, sometimes just wow, to get man, the crowd you. on your side. There are players that always go for it. There are some players who sometimes like to uh, decline shots at the bullseye even when their opponents are on finishes. Phil Taylor, the master of the mind game in that department. Well, Madam Well, Pallet's way ahead in this leg. 
Joseph Brunson had a shocking visit last time. One round four, David McGuire, Yeah, breathing space here for Pallet as well. Flattering noise. Well, again there, I mean, he probably wasn't going to go for the bullseye anyway, but the usual Nine shot is to start on the 19s because single leaves the finish. However, 60. in this situation in the leg, probably the right thing to do to lay up on a, an easier double, one that he prefers. Game shot and and that's an easy leg for David Pallet. Stephen Bunting on. Honest, keeps him thinking. Yeah, Pallet just seems to have uh, rediscovered a bit of belief here now, although Bunting might just extinguish wow, that here. The closest match of this afternoon's session was the one between Ian White and 17. John Bowles with Diamond winning 6-5 with a fabulous 98 finish with Bowles waiting on top for the match. Yeah, it was a good match, that good tussle between those two, but it was White who came out on top between two of the elder statesmen of this weekend's draw. No disrespect One to those two. And this is a leg for Bunting and he's gone off with back-to-back -back 140s, so Pallet has got a lot of work to do if he's going to extend his stay beyond Saturday. Yeah, once again switching to the 18s, that awkward first lie for the first start. But the deficit is 110. Good use of the board from Bunting, and he is in a very strong position now to book his place in the last 16. Well, we saw a 1 2 8 checkout earlier today on the 18th. Yeah, that was Jan Decker to seal victory against Michael Smith, but uh, Bunting's gone the other way. Yeah, again, not needing to go that route because he wouldn't have been going for the bullseye anyway, as yeah. he displayed earlier on. Now, can Pallet apply some kind of pressure? No, he can't. One number. Stephen requires 68. Well, not significant pressure on anyway. He's on a finish of 106, but Bunting here looking to wrap things up here and now. Topsy wants for the match. 28. The agony goes on. David well, David Pallet, this is your moment. Do or die, 106. It will be the 20s or the 18s. 20s it is. Now he leaves double 18. 70. Can't find the target to force a last leg decided. Stephen He's to rely on a miss Bunting. from Stephen Bunting. Well, in a first to 11 format, or a first to six format, I should say, in a best of 11 format, the fine lines like Good that are job. really accentuated and, and they can be brutally punished. And a lovely embrace between the two players at the end of what was a really good tussle in the end. Bunting threatening to run away with things at one stage, but Pallet just kept himself in business to take it to 10 legs but he couldn't force the decider. Bunting sealing the deal in the end and winning 6-4 to set up a third round encounter tomorrow with either Peter Wright or Christian Kist. It could have been another seeded casualty, but it's not to be. David Pallets will reflect on what might have been, but Stephen Bunting goes marching on. One more match in the afternoon session to come. Alan Norris, the defending champion here in Hildesheim, is on stage next against Richie Corner. We'll grab a quick word with Stephen Bunting to see how he can pick through the bones of that one. These are beiden Freunde, David Pallets and Stephen Bunting. Applause for David Pallets. Stephen, congratulations. Never easy to play a good friend, huh? It's more nervous to play a friend than what it is to play a foe, to be honest. And uh, actually, why? Because we get on so well together, uh, we travel together, <laughs> we'll have a drink in the back room together, and it really is difficult. Um, we've both got a lot of respect for each other. And um, Is it difficult to be aggressive in such a match? It's been difficult to be aggressive for the last six months, to be honest. <laughs> Um, it feels a bit weird standing here having won, but I'm, I'm slowly but surely coming back to my best. Um, Where are you right now? 80%, 90%, probably 75 to be honest. Um, nerves have been a real factor for me over the last few months, as many people know, and 
it's difficult to come on a stage when you don't feel good and you feel like you're coming up to lose rather than coming up to win but I'm starting to, to, to switch that round now I'm starting to feel good and I'm enjoying it again so it's time to get self-confidence back you can do that on that stage see you tomorrow again <laughs> Stephen Bunting Er sagt, ja, das stimmt, das ist schön.